Metaspatial SDK is going to drastically expand our non-gaming app ecosystem on Quest. And we hope you're as excited about it as we are. Um, you know, in case you missed it, Metaspatial SDK is our uh, new dev library that leverages Android Studio to help you create these spatialized, high-quality panel experiences uh, mixed with, uh, with 3D that uh, you know, it, it really provides an easier way to, to make non-gaming apps on Quest. Um, I'm Michael Bork. I'm a partner engineer here at Meta. What does that mean? I'm an engineer who works with external developers to create content using our new uh, developer, developer tools, our new developer offerings. So, um, you know, as you can, oh, do I have the clicker? There it is. So, as you can see, our session today is uh, real world applications of the Meta Spatial SDK. And uh, this is a, a developer panel. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be talking to three of our earliest uh, Metaspatial developers. They created the showcase, our open source showcase apps uh, that were announced at the, the developer keynote earlier today. Um, going from left to right, we have Alex from LNR, we have Anna from uh, the Electric Factory, and we have Spencer from P uh, Pixel and Texel. And today, you know, I'm going to ask them a few questions and we're going to talk about their developer experience, the journey that they went on and uh, you know, some learnings and maybe some tips uh, for, for getting started with Metaspatial SDK and, and how you can you know, bring your, your vision to life on Quest, even if you've never made an XR app before. Um, so you know, let's, let's get started. Uh, you know, going down the line, I, I want to hear a little bit more about each of you individually um, and your agencies and, and what you do for your agencies. So Anna, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. I'm Anna. I'm senior creative developer at the Electric Factory. We are from Uruguay, South America. Um, the Electric Factory is a creative tech partner for other companies, and I'm currently working in the spatial arts department, focusing on uh, gaming, interactivity, and spatial app development. And I study audiovisual engineering, and I have a master's degree in multimedia creation and gamification, so my background is a mix of art and technology. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Spencer Evans and I'm the Director of Gaming at Pixel and Texel. Um, my background is uh, actually in academia and after I finished my MFA I moved to Germany for a bit to work as a game engineer and game designer. Um, after moving back, started with Pixel and Texel and I've been with them for nine years now. Um, and yeah, our, our company mix a variety of applications, uh, kind of a mix of traditional web and mobile applications, as well as the side I kind of direct, which is more 3D, XR, VR stuff. Uh, and our leadership was founded, uh, came from the game industry, so we have a background in trying to design and create engaging experiences. Uh, so we try to put that in all of our products. Awesome. And lastly, I'm Alex Kevdot. I'm a software engineer specializing in mobile applications. I've been working for a bit more than 10 years in both Android and iOS. So I've done a lot of mobile applications, but not XR applications. Uh, I work at LNR. It's a design technology studio that builds, of course, mobile applications, but also end-to-end -end software platforms and focuses on emerging technologies, which is what brought us here. Awesome. So uh, let's dive into to your projects. Uh, Spencer, tell us a little bit about GeoVoyage. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so when our team started, we really wanted to create something that was fun and easy to play with, but also inspired a sense of curiosity and exploration about the world around us. So we created GeoVoyage, and when the user starts the app, a stylized 3D globe spawns in front of them. They can you know, use hand gestures or the controller to spin it around, move it around the room, you know, place it on the desk, whatever. Um, and next to it, a 2D panel spawns and floats there. And you can use that panel to initiate one of the four different play modes we created. Um, two of the notable play modes are the Explore mode and the Ask Earth mode. And the Explore mode uh, allows the user to select different landmarks that are sort of spawned on the stylized globe and learn more information about them. Uh, and the other part of that mode is to just freely drop a pin anywhere on the globe and learn more about that location. Um, and that's that information is uh, streamed into the, the 2D panel next to the globe. And that's from uh, generated from Llama 3. 
And the, uh, the Ask Earth mode allows the user to verbalize a question. And we take that, that speech and extract uh, the transcription and an understanding of what the user was uttering and send that to Llama as well and uh, invoke the Llama 3 model to get a response back about that. So it's kind of a, a more structured play mode and um, you know, a free form asking play mode. Yeah, uh, I, one of the coolest parts about his app is when you, you can put a point anywhere on Earth, it gives you a coordinate, and then there's a, you can click a button, takes you into VR mode, and it gives you a, a full 360, you're dropped in that location. So we had a lot of fun just pointing to the middle of, uh, of Australia and just, oh, wow, yeah, like this looks like the middle of Australia. <laughs> no, but highly encourage that. Anna? Um, so, sounds super good. I, I can't wait to, to try it. Um, Focus, uh, the app we developed, uh, is a productivity app uh, where you can uh, design um, or uh, customize your work environment by choosing between different immersive spaces or choose uh, to work in your own space in, in bathroom mode. And with Focus, you have a bunch of tools you can use to leverage your projects. You can build mind maps in space, for example, or create tasks and classify them by priority, open web browsers, and uh, work in your online documents, set timers, organize your thoughts in sticky notes that you can place around. Um, Focus also has an AI assistant integrated, powered by Llama 3. And you can ask whatever you want to the AI to help you produce new ideas, for example. So in essence, Focus is an app to enhance your productivity while serves as an example on how to integrate different spatial SDK features. Yeah, and again, another amazing feature that is selling themselves short on these apps. Uh, you can ask the, the Llama instance you know, anything, but then you can, with a, a single button, it, it pops out a little post-it note of the response so you know you can hey can you you know summarize telling me how to like you know uh, reverse a linked list right and it'll give you instructions and then pop that out into a little task that you can put on your task board. Which I love playing with that, Alex. Well, that sounds really awesome. The the app we built at LNR is called Media View, which spoiler is for viewing media. Uh, <laughs> and what you get when you open it, it's a gallery where you can view all the media again that you have on your device. So that includes pictures and videos, but the coolest part is to actually look at panorama images and 3D uh, images and 3D videos. And this is thought of, well, a bunch of, let's say, panels, if you're familiar with that word, that are 2D views. Um, and then when you open things like panoramas or 3D content, you can actually modify those panels so that they wrap around you or they go completely 360. And that's what we used, the specialist decay, which was really cool. Uh, yeah. For... yeah, we had a lot of fun uh, having a lot, lots of 360 media, which, you know, when you select it, it pops into a, a little orb that you can just see the 360 media and then putting that on your head. So, But then it goes into immersive mode, and it's a lot of fun to play with. So, Alex, I mean, you know, using the Metaspatial SDK, um, you know, in what ways did it accelerate creating the, the MediaView app? Well, for me, as an Android developer, I wouldn't been able to do it without. Uh, I've never used Unity or any of those other tooling. So for me, using the special SDK made it, let's say, relatively easy to apply all my Android background to this uh, special development. So I was already in a familiar environment. So that's Android Studio, Kotlin, and I had to learn all the special concepts, but I found the, the SDK to be quite straightforward. The documentation was great. So I think that made everything so smooth and we were able to focus a lot on features and not so much you know, worrying about the, the details of, the, of running a special app. What's a quaternion, am I right? Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I think one of the things that made this process faster compared to other platforms is that it works uh, on top of Android. So it's easy for an Android developer to, to start working in, in, this, in this platform. It, if this were an entirely new software, uh, developers should need to learn everything from scratch. But even for me, that I'm from XR, um, there's plenty of documentation and examples around, so uh, it was quite easy to jump in this uh, framework. And also, uh, the onboarding of Spatial SDK was super friendly and quick too. And we were amazed with our team on how easy and fast it was to have a prototype running in this platform. 
Yeah, and our our studio is also an XR studio, so we kind of had the same experience as Anna. Is that you know our our this was kind of our first dive straight into native uh, Android development. We we do a lot of app development, but it's usually using toolkits that deployed to like iOS and Android. But um, yeah, the support for the native platform features was really helpful because um, you know a lot of the libraries you may use for app development may not have the bindings for some of the platform features you want for your application. Um, but so having that Kotlin support, the native libraries, like we were just able to easily integrate the AWS Kotlin SDK for our model invoking. So that was really, really smooth. And then uh, the other thing I would say is that the out of the box support for PBR and image based lighting for your 3D models was really great because uh, all of our 3D artists could already st continue using the workflows that they're already familiar with um, for production. Nice. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I, I know we gave you a very early alpha of the, the Metaspatial SDK, so I'm sure there are some issues with that. But in, in general, you know, what, what were some of the things that maybe were a little tougher to, to do or that you, you know, had to you know, kind of work through? But, uh, and, and how did you, you work or, or navigate those roadblocks, Anna? Well, um, for me, Android Studio was a new platform, so at the beginning it was a bit difficult to understand the layout system and the connection between views, but as I said before, there's plenty of documentation around. Anyway, uh, at first I, for example, laid out the, all the panels of the scene in different resolutions, and then I have to uh, resize them in space later. And with each uh, new version of the framework, I had to uh, go back and rework all the panels because something was uh, working wasn't working properly. So uh, I ended up fixing different parts of that process. Um, but if I had to start the app from scratch today, I would probably do this part differently. And another thing that was uh, challenging at the beginning was maybe for you was the same that coming from XR. Um, uh, I had to build scenes uh, without directly seeing them, and that's uh, quite difficult for us uh, XR developers. So uh, you have to place objects by code. So uh, the first uh, week I spent a lot of time trying uh, placing objects and testing on the device if they were in the right spot. Uh, but luckily there's a solution for that nowadays, a scene composer uh, called Cosmos Studio. Uh, where you can um, lay out at least the initial configuration of your scene. Uh, we didn't use it in focus at the end because most of our objects are um, created dynamically by the user. So we solved this by making a function that placed the objects in front of the user and facing the, the user in the moment that are created. Yeah, Meta Special Editor definitely helps yeah, lay out your scene and, and smooths over a lot of the, you know, Okay, like we're in position zero 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 point one. Like, okay, where, where does this need to go? So yeah, it's it's nice to be able to just like export that and and, and see it visualized. Yeah, ex ex sorry, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but also, it's really quick to to test the app from the device uh, because uh, from Android Studio is super easy, and you don't even need to put the device on. You can just cast from the device to the computer to see it on screen for quick test. So. Yeah, it used to work a little bit like this. So I would run it and then it was casting using either the, my phone or the companion mm -hmm. application and you could see the result instantly. And I found it very complicated as well at the beginning being an Android developer to place things on around space. I would be like, okay, I'm going to open the panel. Oh, it's over there. Okay, let's <laughs> play it. Oh, now it's here. Okay, it's getting closer. And even figuring out how to detect where the user was looking at or where their hands were at, I think now with the, the code of our application is open source and also there is more documentation. So I think these things will be much straightforward for you to get into. But there are some XR concepts that I had to learn at the beginning. And even on the Android world, I found it difficult that everything is based on panels. So you're familiar with the Android world, which could be activities or just views. But you have multiple panels open, which to me it feels like multiple phones open around me. That's the way that I kind of pictured it. Um, and I wanted them to communicate with each other. Uh, so I think that was a bit of a challenge as well, because on Android, you just have like a single stack or a single application. And I had to figure out a way to, for these panels to talk to each other. But that was a, an interesting challenge. Yeah. yeah, I think when we started too, we, we wanted the Tony Stark, you know, minority report, you know, doing <laughs> panels everywhere, manipulating. And um, 
we were running into some technical issues at that point that I think have since been resolved. Um, but in place of that, I think the solution we arrived at is better and hopefully more useful for any Android developers because we have a single panel. It's like a, a tablet, you know, landscape layout. It uses Jetpack Compose and MVVM. So hopefully something Android developers can catch on to. Um, the other thing, not to call out the Horizon OS team, but also to call them out, there's no uh, uh, inherent support for the Android speech recognizer service. Uh, but what we ended up using instead of that, I think was a net positive because we went with wit.ai, which is a, another meta project um, product. And that, that allowed us to not only get the transcription, but the understanding of what the user was uttering based on different entities and traits we define. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was our ch main challenges. Yeah, so so we've talked about like the, this deep Android like kind of integration and, and and using that, but you know, with that in mind, Spencer, you know, how does Metaspatial SDK and its kind of Android roots, how does that compare to to some other platforms? Yeah, um, I would say the support for like existing um, Kotlin and like UI libraries like Jetpack Compose allows us to make more rich UI uh, that some of the other XR you know, platforms that we use don't support. Um, the entity component system and like automatically networked uh, component properties is really nice. Uh, we've had to work on you know, projects before where uh, late like synchronization and, and those sort of things were a little tricky. Um, yeah, and then just once again, I feel like I'm hammering on this, but the, the native support for like the native platform features through Kotlin and Android Studios is really powerful compared to other uh, toolkits where you may not have those bindings available. Um, for me, one of the, the main advantage of this framework is that uh, it allows you to convert to spatial your already existing application. I mean, it's uh, really quick to convert a mobile app to a panel in space. But from then on, it depends on which spatial feature you want to add to your app. But there are good sample projects to show you how to do it. And um, also, um, the implementation of extra features, it's uh, really uh, easy as well and a great advantage because uh, you can integrate almost anything to an Android uh, platform. For example, in Focus, we have a web view that was pretty easy to integrate. Um, what's uh, Michael, the one who find out, find out how to do it, not me actually, <laughs> but um, it was just searching how to do it for an Android platform, and it was working in the Quest as well. Yeah, we had to add a web view as well, um, and it literally at times it felt like working on an Android project. Uh, you could, would completely forget that you're working on a, an XR environment. And some things that are a little bit different, like we had to do a an, an feature to upload from Google Drive so that you would literally get files on your device from Google Drive, but you don't have the Google Play services because, again, it's not an Android phone. No? So it does have this familiarity of, of being an Android project uh, and a lot of their advantages. Great. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, I, you made the Media View app. Um, that's you know seeing media, uh, lots of panels, like it makes a lot of sense for this platform. What other kinds of you know kinds of projects would you turn to this SDK for in the future if you're going to make a future project? Like what types of projects do you think it's good for? Sure. So I would say one no-brainer would be if you have an Android application and you wanted to port it to XR and you want to give some special features to it, then go ahead, jump right into it. I would say it's still super valuable for every new application that you want to build if you have resources or knowledge in the Android world. And it's very UI heavy in terms of there are lists or you are using material design, for example, or you have a lot of scrolling. So applications that feel, oh, this could be a mobile application, then you can use this framework also to, to bring it there to, to the Quest. Yeah, just to echo that, um, one something our studio would use it for is for UI rich applications. Um, you know, once again, support for like Jetpack Compose, Android UI allows us to get up and running with rich UI and use existing libraries out of the box. Um, one thing I think that's really important for me is that we were able to get up and running very quickly, which is important for any projects where you may have really tight deadlines or timelines rather. Um, and then I'd say the last one is like, um, Using Kotlin and like learning Kotlin and native Android development is 
you know, coming from an XR studio that doesn't really do that that much, it was a breeze. Like, very well documented. Uh, highly recommend it. So, you know, I imagine other studios out there, part of the technology solution that you may pitch to clients uh, depends on what resources you will have available at that time. You know, if you have two idle software engineers who know X and Y, uh, you can build with X and Y. Um, so a lot of our studio uses like C-based languages and learning Kotlin was was easy, so. Yeah, I, I think you can do whatever you want with Spatial SDK. You can build a game, for example, but since there are already good platforms for VR gaming and uh, one of the main advantage of this framework is that you may already have an Android app developed, uh, we would choose this platform to work with utility apps, mostly maybe productivity apps like Focus or e-commerce, for example, rather than games or full immersive experiences. Also, as you were saying, um, as Android's platform is a powerful uh, platform to build um, uh, mobile apps. Uh, the layout system is perfectly designed to create views. So it's really easy to create panels and then modify it. So um, I um, think uh, this uh, framework to be used with um, applications that has a solid mobile uh, structure while also take advantage of the space as well. Think of Spatial SDK as an immersive layer on top of your mobile Android app. Yeah, great point. Now, I mean, you, you all have kind of like touched on this briefly, but you know, more directly, how, how quick were your, your studios able to, to get started with this framework? Uh, Anna, do you want to? Yeah, I think um, for us, it was super quick to, to start uh, working with the Spatial SDK. Maybe it took us um, two weeks to, to, to do in some research and then to, to jump in the the sample projects and uh, to test uh, some uh, specific uh, features that we were planning to add to focus. Uh, yeah, we had a similar like two week timeline actually. Um, it, you know, we had a small team of engineers in the beginning and we just threw it to them and there was a lot of trial and error and breaking stuff and going back and seeing the examples and documentation and seeing how things work. But after that, we were able to move really quickly. Uh, I think our total timeline was just like 10 weeks or so. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll also say that we were able to move a lot faster on some features that we originally spec'd for, you know, three or four days, ended up taking like an afternoon, like the, uh, the custom, like the tether component system we built, which keeps the panel right there next to the, the globe was ended up being like an afternoon. It was easy to do. Yeah, I'll say some similar times as well. Um, I found it pretty fast to go through the documentation, basically reading and scanning through, and then just playing around, understanding, hey, how to place things, how to move them around, how to use components, how to create new ones. So a couple of weeks to get familiar with all this system. And then the UI itself or the Android part, since I was already familiar, not so much. Uh, but yeah, getting to know the special SDK was, was a couple of weeks of time. Pretty smoothly, I would say. Awesome. So, you know, in the spirit of uh, you know sharing your your wealth of knowledge, you know, in this is real world applications. Uh, you know, share with us like maybe your favorite feature. <laughs> sure, I can go. Um, so, coming at it from game design and game engineering, we always try to figure out what is the core interaction, what is the core experience of this product, and for me, uh, that that was the spinning of the globe, right? Like that had to feel really good, uh, tilting it, moving it, uh, had to feel really fun, but you also needed to be able to find a point that you're looking for immediately. Uh, so we started on that system early. That was a, a custom entity component system, uh, part of the core architecture of the spatial SDK. And uh, yeah, iterated a lot on that, uh, spent a lot of time on that and really happy with, with where we were able to get that. Awesome. Yeah, I, I would say what I love is being able to spawn a lot of panels. As you said before, like Tony Stark, like you have your windows everywhere, your panels, and you move them around. In this case, you open this media file, you open this image, this video, and you have it around. Maybe even create an art gallery around you. Uh, so you're placing pictures in the walls. Uh, so this ability to be able to spawn panels, to manage them, to change their properties and control them, I find that's really well done through the, through the special SDK. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, I think um, 
like a, a, like the the possibility to open a lot of things at the same time and uh, to multitask is uh, really it's really nice.